Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm excited today to be talking all about the movie Metal Lords with actress Isis Hainsworth. And I actually wanted to, to start by asking you about one of the early conversations that you had with Peter Sollett, who's the director of the film, um, you know, because you're playing this character, Emily, and there's, there's references to her struggling a lot with anxiety, with anger, with some of her emotions. There's, you know, there, there's kind of like a brief mention of medication that she takes, but never a specific diagnosis. So you really just get to play to the emotional experience and trajectory of this character. Um, and, and I know that one of the first things that you did was actually have a conversation with him about, is there a specific diagnosis that we're playing to, or is this about, you know, the general experience of, of what it is for this character, just kind of making her way through the world and that that was the direction that you went in. And so how did that really inform the way that you viewed this character, the way that you developed her and the way that you wanted to portray that in your performance? I think, not giving her a very specific diagnosis was, it gave me a lot more freedom. If if we had given her a very specific thing, then I would have wanted to make sure that it was exactly, my performance was exactly right to that specific thing. But I think not giving her that means that far more people can relate to her and see aspects of themselves in her, um, which I think is a lot nicer. Also, it was very much, she's just a, a young person living in, the world that we live in today um and yeah she's maybe sometimes angry about that and that's kind of quite reasonable maybe she doesn't um put it out there in the best way possible um sometimes and she should definitely keep on taking her medication um yeah so I also really love the way that you you play those moments where things do really come to the surface and she is just kind of taken over by emotion but they all kind of come from different places like there's a slight difference in the reaction she has when she's kind of shouting at the, the leader of the marching band versus that moment where Hunter's giving a speech because that's more of a personal connection that she has with him in that moment. And so when you're playing to those scenes, how did you kind of find what it was going to look like within her when she gets taken over by her emotions and, and how she was going to respond to these situations? With me, I'm very, a lot of the time, what comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. Um, and then that'll just, be what <laughs> that's just what happens what happens and definitely that was what occurred with the <laughs> with the with the slight freakouts um it was funny they didn't get me to do that in the audition I didn't do any of those until I arrived and then yeah we did the first one was the classroom moment um and at first it wasn't really scripted that she screams at him. It was scripted that she runs around and chases him around the room after he has done all that towards her. But it felt like on the day, it felt like something needed to come out of her mouth. It felt like it was wrong for her to sit there silently. And so, yeah, the first time I did it, it took me by surprise, definitely. I don't normally go around <laughs> screaming at people it never it's never actually happened I don't think um so it def it came really out of nowhere and I think I shocked everybody else in that room as well I think all the reactions are quite real <laughs> um but it was very fun I really enjoyed getting to do that because I never do that in my normal life <laughs> most people don't um yeah yeah it was really fun getting to do those those moments yeah <laughs> Did it really help getting to be able to improvise so much in those particular moments? And, you know, kind of just in general in the film as a whole, the fact that there was that freedom to, to really try different things for scenes at, at the moments that it needed it as well. Yes, definitely. I loved getting to just go, just be and say whatever comes out of your mouth. <laughs> you know, that's always really fun. I'm not very used to doing improvisation, but it was so much fun it was, gives you so much freedom um yeah they were very kind to me letting me just go um in most of the scenes they were completely we said what was on the script um they always asked for our opinions on everything um but yeah we normally went by line by line what was in the script whereas with those it was very much up to me Sometimes they would tell me to take out a swear word if there was too many, or sometimes they would tell me to add in a swear word if there wasn't enough, um, which I loved. It's always fun to get to swear at people. Yeah, yeah, it was very fun. 
And in talking a little bit about the music in the film, obviously for Emily, she's going through this journey of, of being introduced to, to metal music coming from a very classical background. And for you as well, it sounds like this film also kind of served as, as an introduction and an education in, in that genre of music as well. And was that actually a helpful element to come into it, not having the full scope of knowledge and kind of sharing that journey with Emily in terms of her starting to listen to a lot of music, really understanding it, really understanding the culture, the expression that comes with it as well? Yes, yeah, so much. It was very helpful. I think, yeah, for the character, because we were so similar in our knowledge of metal, we really didn't know anything. And then throughout filming for me and throughout the movie for her, she learns so much about it. And, you know, we got to work with such incredible people on in this film, such like metal gods, <laughs> um, which was so incredible. Um, yeah, so I think our sort of mirroring, mirroring um, I can't say that, mirroring um, <laughs> journeys with our metal, um, our metal journey throughout the film was really good because Emily is very different to me in lots of ways, but in that way, she is completely the same as I am. Um, and I think for her, very much metal becomes her release towards the end of the movie. She has so much rage inside her that comes out in ways that it probably really shouldn't. Um, and I think metal becomes her release of all of that rage as yeah, she discovers it. She realizes, oh, maybe this is the thing for me. And it, all, it helps her discover a group of people as well that she belongs with finally, um, which is lovely to see. Yeah, gives her the confidence to finally be herself truly, yeah. <laughs> Right. I mean, you just hit upon it so so articulately there where it is about her kind of finding that release and finding an expression, but also about the confidence. And I wanted to ask you about that journey with her as a character and finding that self-confidence because you lean into those moments where she's unsure how to act in a situation. She's not necessarily certain of the right thing to say in a moment. And then by the end of the movie, it's not that she's completely shifted and changed as a person, but she's found a lot more self-confidence in herself and, and in expression um, and so how did you kind of put lay out that trajectory for her as a character and want to play to that arc of of okay this you know this is an experience that would allow her to feel a little bit more confidence and and having it go step by step so that we have that real journey in her as a character by the end of the movie I mean she starts the film completely alone um in so many different ways. She, at school, she has no friends. She's not from the same place as everyone else is. She's Scottish, so culturally she's completely isolated as well. Um, and then throughout the film meeting Kevin and him introducing her to metal, she finally, you know, she has people around her who finally make her feel like she belongs and like she's worthy of love and care and all the things that human beings need. Um, I loved getting to play that. This, yeah, her her arc of the movie. I was so glad to see her finally feeling, I think, better in herself. I think even in like the costume. I think you can see at the start she very she drowns herself in her clothes. She is very um, yeah hides herself in her clothing. And then by the end of the film, she's not a completely different person. She's still who she always was but you can see that she is more confident in the human being that she is. And she knows that she is worthy and she doesn't need to change herself, but she can channel those bits of rage and those emotions into something more productive, um, which is lovely to see. She is no, like, she's not cured. She's not suddenly miraculously not angry anymore. Um, but metal is a great way for her to, yeah, channel her energy into something. Yeah. And, you know, you were bringing up that obviously at the beginning of the film, she's she's very isolated and a very lonely character, um, you know, but I loved some of the details of that, like when they're at the Battle of the Bands and they have to change the band name because they're not allowed on stage with Skullfucker. Yeah. You know, she actually runs to the janitor and it's clear that she already knows him, has had a lot of conversations with him and, and that's how they get access to the art room immediately. And did you see her as someone who kind of, 
as, as much as she's kind of lonely and quite isolated with her peers, kind of like finds those other people on the outskirts that are, that are being ignored as well and finds these really quiet connections with people. Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, she sees the other outsiders. I think it's why her and Kevin are so quick to be, to have such a strong connection. She sees the other people who are on the outskirts of the school, the society that she lives in. And yeah, her and Eli, the janitor, I think have been friends for a very long time. <laughs> I think she's probably the closest with him. You know, her time in school, I think they probably hung out quite a lot. Maybe they ate lunch together and things. Um, yeah, which I think is really sweet. I think definitely because she's an outsider. So she notices all those other people who are also that, um, yeah. You know, and you're, you're bringing up there the, the dynamic that starts to exist with that connection that she has with Kevin. And it's really beautiful to watch the way that the two of them connect so instantaneously. And there's a real, you know, immediate intimacy in terms of the way that they kind of see something in each other. And then at the same time, you know, they're teenagers and they're both trying to figure their way out in the world and they're both not feeling fully confident and comfortable in their skin. And so it does allow for those slight awkwardness you know, in the moments where they're not sure what to say or, or how to move with one another. Um, and so how did the two of you really work together to kind of find what are the ways in which they feel very comfortable with each other, but also what are the moments where they're still figuring each other out a little bit? I think, I think Emily probably has, well, I know she has some issues understanding social cues, understanding how to really be around other people sometimes and how to interact with other people. Um, and I think Kevin really helps her with that, helps her to understand how to, yeah, talk. I mean, they're teenagers, of course, it's, it's all a learning experience. It's a completely new relationship. It's the first time they've ever had a boyfriend and girlfriend. All of those experiences are completely new to them. Um, I'm lucky that Jaden is so wonderful at his job and is such a lovely person. And um, yeah, luckily we were quite comfortable with each other, I think. Um, which hopefully means that our chemistry was all right <laughs> in the scenes. Um, I think their relationship is so important to Emily. She finally feels loved and like her imperfections aren't, you know, the end of the world actually, you know, and he accepts her for all of her imperfections and actually loves her for them as well, which is, I think, what we all want as human beings is just someone to let you know when you've done something a little bit wrong and you could learn from that and get better from that but also I still love you and I still value you as a person yeah <laughs> Absolutely. It's so lovely to see between the two of them. I also wanted to ask you about kind of how you viewed a lot of her home life. You know, we see a couple of moments where she's in her bedroom and what her home looks like. Um, but a lot of what we know about her family, her parents, her dynamic is, it's just from a few little things that she says. And did you have conversations with Peter at all and him directing the film about what you felt like her family life looked like, what her home life looked mm -hmm. like, what her relationship was with her parents and, and how that would influence her as a character yeah we had a few conversations with peter about her home life um and we did think that her parents would be very loving and very supportive to her um it would be nice to see them at some point i would like to know who they are and how they ever came from scotland to america and are now florists that would be interesting to know <laughs> um but they are they are having to deal with something that isn't totally normal um with her behavior and I think it's tricky for anyone. And I think Emily is probably quite secretive as teenagers can be and are a lot of the time. I think she probably hides a lot of stuff from her parents um, and maybe they don't quite know the extent of how deeply she feels insecure and feels, you know, like an outsider at school. I think maybe they don't know the full, the full picture of what's really going on for her. Um, yeah, but I do think they are very loving. And if they, she did share that with them, I'm sure they would be lovely about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
And, mm-hmm. and I also wanted to ask you about working with Vanessa Freeburn Smith, who's a cellist that you kind of worked with and, and trained with for the movie as well, for a lot of the moments where we see Emily playing the cello, because it comes down to, you know, kind of like the movement, the motion of, of kind of like how you interact with the instrument, being very familiar with what the performance needs to be. You know, there, it's very different watching her in the room with Kevin as it is watching the Battle of the Bands performance. You know, those are two diff- very different ways in which you're kind of communicating with the instrument on screen. And so how did Vanessa really help you to master a lot of what you needed to, to get for those scenes? I mean, she was incredible. I'm so thankful for her. Um, honestly, on that movie, not a lot of people knew all that much about cello on set and everything. So she was really my my kind of my mum. She became sort of like my LA cello mum. Sadly, she was on FaceTime for most of it because of COVID and lockdown and all that stuff. You know, just another nice knock from COVID there. Um, yeah, she really was so helpful to me. We had I did lessons every day for a month before we started filming, and then for the entirety of filming as well. Um, because I really, I've never had to do that. I've never had to learn something from scratch for a job before. And I really wanted to do it justice. Hopefully I, I prayed I did. Um, and she was so incredible. Um, I only met her one time in person for like about half an hour, which was great. Um, I also, luckily for the end because they are very different her playing her acoustic cello to then her playing the heavy metal cello at the end standing up they are very different and I was lucky enough to meet Tina Guo who's sort of cello goddess of standing up playing and she was really helpful in me finding the movement because cello is also very static you can't maybe move around as much as you would with a guitar you know um so it's about finding the movement that I can do in the performance and making it look interesting and making it look heavy (laughs) um in a way that the boys could maybe do it slightly easier than I could because I couldn't move so it was good it was really amazing to get to speak to her and get to learn from her swishing my hair around basically was what it became move your hair move your hair (laughs) yeah yeah luck I was so lucky to meet with really amazing cellists it was crazy 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 that's such a great point though that I hadn't even thought about in terms of not being able to move very much with the cello because it feels very dynamic when you're watching it. And I actually, I love the moment where, you know, she, Emily starts to really interact with the crowd and like throws her cello bow out into the audience mm-hmm. and then reaches over and grabs another one. Um, where did that moment come from? Was that part of the script or was that something that you all figured out as you were working on the choreography of that entire segment? Yeah, we discovered that we did maybe three days of really intense rehearsal for the Battle of the Bands to try and come up with yeah, some performance moments that were really great and made it look really incredible on stage, hopefully. Um, Yeah, and that sort of came from those days of rehearsal, thinking of what can we do? What can we do to make this look amazing? Um, Luckily, I I only hit someone in the face one time. Uh, (laughs) Only one take I did that. Poor Michelle got a cello bow to the face. She was lovely about it, luckily. Maybe we'll see that in bloopers one day. (laughs) Yeah, it was great getting to do that, getting to come up with some really awesome moments, little moments in that. Jaden also throws a, a drumstick, I think, at one point and then pulls another one out of his back, which is great. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You also, you know, in performing with Jaden and Adrian in that scene as well, you have to have such great communication as scene partners Mm -hmm. for that performance. You know, they're a band on stage, they're in the middle of a performance, they can't stop and be like, oh, I'm going to do this now, you're going to do this. You know, anything that happens that's spontaneous, they have to be able to really silently communicate. Um, Mm -hmm. Was it something where shooting those three days came later in the film and so you could really lean into the dynamic that the three of you had, had developed or how did you really find that kind of intrinsic communication that they have on stage in their performance together yeah it was honestly battle of the bands was 
mad three days. It was very long and very intense. Um, and I was so lucky to have those two up there with me. Yeah, luckily it did come towards the end of filming. So we did have quite good, you know, we were, we were friends by that point, which was really nice. Um, and you could look over and see that they were going just as hard as you um, and that they were supporting you and you were supporting them. Um, and also, and doing that performance was so bonding as well. I think we got even closer after doing those three days because it was, it was like we were a real band do, doing this real show. Um, yeah, the first time we did it, I think we were all super nervous because we suddenly realized, oh God, yeah, this is actually going to be like, we're a band performing in front of all of these people. Um, yes, yeah, so I was very lucky to have them beside me doing all the same things that I was supporting each other. Yeah, it's incredibly bonding. Phew, it would have been <laughs> terrifying if it was just me. I would have, I think I might have cried if it was just me. Yeah, we, we managed, we got through it. <laughs> well, it's such a great dynamic between the three of you and especially in, in that scene in particular. And I love everything that you were able to do with Emily as a character. So thank you so much for sharing all of this. Really appreciate it, Isis. Oh, thank you so much for chatting with me. It was so lovely. <laughs> thank you.